All right, Rick Buecher is going to be on Speak all week. Um, it really interesting watching what's happening in the NBA. Steph's out of the playoff. LeBron's out. Embiid's about to be out. KD's out. Mm -hmm. Dame could be out. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have these young teams like OKC and Indiana and Minnesota. And I didn't know if this was the year. Yeah. Because people were selling me on Sacramento last year. This is the year when yeah. OKC got another draft and more good players. And I don't know what it means for the NBA going forward, but I do feel like this is the pivot year. Like, yeah. like KD to me, my, my view of KD, I've always thought a little bit of a wanderer, but you know, he's a cornerstone guy. I can't think of him that way. He's no. just a baller. Yeah. No, he's a hired gun. He's a mercenary. Okay. And I wonder if it would have been different if Seattle had never moved to Oklahoma City because he was so attached. He still is emotionally attached to that city and, and, and that situation, that being where he started and where he got, he got drafted. But since then, no, it's always felt like he's looking for that place that is going to fulfill him, and he hasn't found it. Right. And so he's a great player. He's a great talent. Yeah. And he has a great work ethic, but he doesn't create your culture. And I'm not convinced that he necessarily uh, makes everyone better. He may work with young players. Yeah. He may set a great example. But when it comes to really organizing you and orchestrating you on the court, uh, He's not in the same camp as LeBron. And he's never wanted to be. He's yeah. never wanted that That's right. He's really right now what he always told us he was. Yeah. But it is interesting. I look at star players in the NBA. Let's say there's 15 true stars. Yeah. There's two camps. There's the, um, I feel like, kind of a Luka, LeBron, Steph, I can build around you. Then there's just the really talented guys. Yeah. Kyrie, Kawhi, James Harden. I always kind of thought KD was more in the LeBron camp. I do look at him now. Two of his last three playoff series out in the first round. Yep. He's in the Kyrie, Kawhi, little enigmatic. Yeah. Not necessarily emotionally, physically, who I can depend on. Just an all-time talent. Yeah. And that's, that's this is the difficulty when we're trying to, to judge players or rate them or, or yeah. list them. And there's, there's two components. There's sort of the emotional intelligence, your ability to lead, your ability to gather, uh, your ability to connect. And then there's just your per t pure talent on the court. Yeah. And you have varying degrees of that, right? Jalen Brunson, probably talent-wise and just physical ability, like you're not putting him there with Kevin Durant or Kawhi Leonard. But the emotional quotient... The, the ability to connect people, to lead, is, puts, him, puts him higher on the scale. And sometimes we just look at a player and their talent and go, well, you can't put Jalen Brunson. I mean, that's, I think that's been the struggle all year long. Like people have underrated Jalen Brunson because they don't understand what he does to a team. And Steph Curry has gone through the same thing. Pure talent just because of the physical limitations – we underrate what they mean to a culture and to a team. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Playoffs can really create clarity. Like if I was Phoenix now, I'd probably keep Booker. I'd move everything else. <laughs> I would try to move it and start over. Don't double down on a mistake. Yeah. We, we talked about this earlier. What the playoffs have told us, mm -hmm. the oven beats the microwave. Yeah, yeah. Denver, OKC, India, the oven beats the microwave. Yeah. Take LeBron out, the microwave's almost useless. I mean, there was the Kevin Garnett Boston thing. Yeah. There's LeBron. And the rest of this stuff is, goes sideways fast, yeah. even with KD's talent. Yeah. And even with LeBron, you still need the right pieces. And it didn't, like, even Miami, like they didn't get it right the first time. And then they realized, oh, we got to add a few more pieces. LeBron's got to change how he, the relationship between Le LeBron and Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh has to change. Yeah. Uh, and they were all willing to do that. And you had somebody who had the blueprint for that. So, yeah, it, no, it takes time to build these. But as far as the Suns are concerned, I would go the exact opposite direction. I don't think you can build around Devin Booker. because uh, two, two reasons why he would be the guy that I would move. Okay, so we talked about this earlier. You can get more for him. Exactly right. That's I right. can hit the reset button. I can get draft picks back. I mean, you look at what Rudy Gobert. What you no, got you, for Rudy Gobert. I mean, honestly, in a shooter's league. Yeah. 
you could get three first and two players for him. And he's, you? he's 27 years That's old, right. and you have locked up, up for the next four years? And he's also not a one, but he's for a team. Like, like let's say the Lakers had it. They're mm-hmm. dying for like that. Like, yeah. there's like a 10, and he would go to people that have a team and say, let's just give our bench and draft picks up, yep. and let's go get it. Yeah. I think Booker on the – but my take was, okay, now I'm relying on Bradley Beal and KD. But well, again, if I get something in return – yeah, a bench picks, and I know who K- and KD I've got for two more years. All right, and let's reset the expectation. I mean, I think it was always crazy that we were immediately saying, "Oh, they're they're championship the contenders." Way, this is this is really interesting that you bring this up because if you're Phoenix today, you've got to do something. This is not going to work. You hundred percent. You don't even match up with the Lakers, Denver, or Minnesota size. You just don't match up. Forget Correct. Milwaukee in the East and Boston. You're just... you're, And you have duplication to the nth degree. On mid-range jumpers. Yeah. So just throw... You say Devin Booker. Mm-hmm. And I think you could get... Not an ant haul, but a haul. Yeah. You could get three good players and three first-round picks. Tell me where he works. How about Miami? Miami works... I, I don't know if I'm going to get enough from them. That's true. To to be able to. Yeah. Um, yeah. I haven't. I, I haven't. Yeah. I, the only team that I looked at, and it's hilarious because it would reunite DeAndre Ayton, Portland, <laughs> and Devin Booker. But if I could get. That's right. Malcolm Brogdon, Jeremy Grant, Anthony Simons, and picks, and two or three picks. They don't want their picks because they're so young anyway. Now Portland needs guys, and and Portland would say, Hey, you know what? We got our new Damian Lillard. We got our new guy because, but, and the reason that you can't, and I have nothing, I'm not blaming Devin Booker for what happened to Phoenix, but he's been there nine years. He's never won a playoff game without Chris Paul. And he's looked at as the number one there. I don't know that you can keep him there and he's going to say, okay, now I'm going to be the number two or how you're going to get a number one. So Portland needs exactly what he delivers. Veteran presence, 27 a night. Yeah. Yeah. And maturity doesn't get in trouble. And Good guy. Whole thing. I yeah. mean, the whole package. Look, I'm not saying that that's going to happen or should happen. And I'm not even saying that that's the best deal. I just started thinking about what could you get for, what could the Phoenix Suns get for Devin Booker that Mo- would fit around everything else that they have that would make them better than they are right now? And that would do it. Good call. That's, oh, are you, what are you shaking your head at? I like that move. Portland's got too many young players and Jeremy Grant. They need a substantial all-star. And Phoenix needs picks, a bench, and guys that work with KD. What, what guys that work with KD? What is KD at this stage, Rick? Is he almost He's done? He's 27 a night. Uh, uh, hurt all the yes. time? Well, Doesn't play no, any he, played, he played a ton of games this year. Yep. KD okay, so who's your leader? If you get rid of Booker, who's your leader in Phoenix? It isn't Kevin Durant, and it's not Bradley Beal. Well, but it's not Devin Booker. I mean, where did, where, where, where did Devin Booker lead you? He was drafted by Phoenix, though. I, yeah, I, he, I know remember. that's exactly why you need to move remember, him because he's Devin, been there for nine seasons, and without Chris Paul, he's never even made the playoffs. Remember, remember this. Other than before this year. Before Chris Paul got there, Phoenix was a tire fire. 100%. Yeah. They were just like, you're just like, well, Booker's good, but and then Chris Paul gets there an hour later, they're good. He leaves, you're back to being disappointing. So he's not an asset that's winning big playoff series. Yeah. You're you not moving that He's kind. not your corner. We talked about cornerstones, right? Durant played Devin 75 Booker's- games this year, by the way. He wasn't hurt. Yeah. He and Anthony Davis played their butt off this year. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. And look, Kevin can still, by all measures, look, he wasn't KD uh, pre-Achilles. He's still. But he was as good as we've seen him since the Achilles. Yeah. And again, now knowing what KD is and he isn't, now I'm going to use Devin Booker and I'm going to try to find those. I'm going to find that orchestrator, which I think Malcolm yeah. Brogdon could be that. I'm going to find defensive guys like Jeremy Grant. Anthony Simons can be the scorer yeah. for less that yeah. Devin Booker is. There you go. All right. Um, so <laughs> when you look at Lakers Denver tonight, it's so funny to watch Laker fans. Hmm. Literally jump back on the, so you're saying we got a chance. And it's like, if Jamal Murray played tonight, they're going to win by 15. He yeah. may not, they'll win by six. Yeah. But 
there's a lot of chatter. I thought it was very interesting that there was a story that was leaked last week that Darvin Ham will return. Yeah. To me, that was Jeannie Buss and Rob Palenka getting ahead of the finger pointing by LeBron's guys. Yep. Was yep. I wrong on that? No. Well, I mean, and we've seen it happen, uh, whether it's Anthony Davis or Rui Hachimura or LeBron sort of indicating or by absence of saying anything that they're trying to lay all this on Darvin Ham, which is just is really disappointing. I mean, the Denver Nuggets have not taken them seriously. They have it in this entire season. No, I mean, seriously, and, they start slow every game. And, 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 you know, you've beaten somebody eight times in a row, regular season playoffs, it doesn't matter. And then you, you start slow and you're still beating them. You're still walking them down. I don't blame them, but that's why I, I fully expect that it's going to be over tonight because yeah. they're going to say, okay, let's stop messing around. Let's, let's, let's get this done. I don't know that they're going to start any, any stronger but they'll get to it a little yeah, quicker. People, Laker fans are not realizing in any sport, if you beat somebody a dozen straight times, yeah. I mean, if, even in boxing, yeah. the guy that loses the first fight has a decided workout emotional preparation advantage yes. after yes. losing yes. one fight. Yes. Denver's beating these guys for two years straight every night. And by the way, the same way yeah. by closing yeah. out with five minutes left. So yeah. I think Denver tonight feels some urgency. The, um, the Mavs Clippers, so when you have players like Luka and Kyrie, mm. and, 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 and I would submit to you, before this year, they were both viewed as poor defensive players. Kyrie, awful. Luka, disengaged. Yep. But you have to build a roster to protect them. Yep. And so when I watched Dallas, I'm like, oh, it's a lopsided roster. Two great scores and people protecting two bad <laughs> defenders. Yeah. So I really do think even though the two best players in the series are probably Dallas, yeah. I feel like the Clippers are a more, it's not a lobsided roster. I agree. No, agree. They, they have more two-way players. Yes. They have more guys who can be a threat offensively and can defend like their position. Like five guys with the Clippers. Yeah. No, agreed. Agreed. It's their ability to stay focused yeah. and not to get into isolation basketball at the end of games. I, it's just, we see it over and over and over again. And the problem with Dallas is they simply haven't stayed close enough to make that work uh, uh, and, and, and finish it in two of the games. Yeah. I, am, I picked Dallas to win the series. I'm going to stay with them because if we just look on paper and what the Clippers are able to do, I, I, I rode that train for three years. Yeah, so did and I. They, and then they, they just, at the end of games, they, Paul George, I can't trust his decision-making. James Harden, I can't trust his commitment, just his focus and attention. Um, and then who else am I going to? And Ka Kawhi Leonard, I can't, I can't trust that he's going to be healthy. Yeah. So who am I going to trust I know. to bring the game home? If I look at them on paper, yeah, they should be in the conference finals. No question about it. Right. But how many times have they been? Yeah. No, so at some point, you just have to say it's it's inherently flawed. The Suns this year are my Clippers last year. I kept convincing myself mm, mm. this year with Phoenix and last mm. year with the Clippers because I look at the Clippers roster and I'm like, I like all of it and I love the coach. And it's for the same reason. And we, it goes back to our original thing about that yeah. emotional quo quotient, about that, that, that one player that galvanizes everyone, yeah. that makes everyone, that brings everybody together, especially when things get rough. Who is that for the Los Angeles Clippers? Who is that for the Phoenix Suns? I know who that is for the Dallas Mavericks. Or the Knicks. Or the Knicks. And I want Jalen Brunson, yeah. Luka Doncic. So put your general manager hat on. Yeah. So Jalen's your one. But Julius Randle, they're better without him. Mm. They're, they, they give Jalen more touches, so they're going to move him. If you were the GM... You'd probably move Julius Randle. He's expensive for kind of a B guy. Mm -hmm. Gives you great effort, so he kind of fits Tibbs. But in the end, they actually are better without him. And probably because Tibbs likes him so much. Right. Tibbs does more for him than you probably should be doing. Who would you go get? Who would be? Oh. Carl Anthony Towns is really interesting, and yes. they got some money issues here at the end of the season. Yeah. I, I mean, I would potentially. Here, th this is the difficulty for me in that. If you're looking to bring in that really big talent like a Carl Anthony Towns, I don't 
I don't know how that personality is going to fit in with a chemistry that the Knicks have from those Villanova guys. Because he's sort of quirky. That is so tight. It, he's it, always it, been that. It, he, it, it, exactly. I don't know the maturity level. Now, I would hope that as we've seen with Andrew Wiggins going to Golden State, that I have that young kind of immature guy who yeah. really doesn't know exactly how to win, and I bring him into my culture, and he comes along for the ride. Maybe Carl Anthony Towns does that for you, but I don't know. So from a talent perspective, yeah, that would be a great, I, I, I'd love to, that, does that would be a great fit. what you are and who you are. Exactly. And so, I mean, maybe it's, and I don't know that I'm going to get that for Julius Randle. I mean, why, why, why would Minnesota do Well, so Julius Randle, I think the playoffs are truth serum. Hmm. You really just, they're total truth serum. The truth is Jokic is dominant. Yep. Is that Dame when healthy is a handful. Um, Jalen Brunson is it. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Butler is tough. Mm -hmm. They're also a true serum with Julius Randle's always struggled in the postseason. Yeah. He hits a tough because he's an effort guy. D'Angelo Russell. You totally hit the yeah. truth in the postseason. Yeah. yeah. Because during this, the regular season. Effort gets you. Effort and. Uh, and pure talent. You can be really good when it comes to pure talent. And we talked about this with D'Angelo Russell. When D'Angelo Russell said, I play my best when I'm not thinking, I'm like, oh, that's a regular season player. Yeah. Because you have to be intentional yeah. with everything you do in the postseason. And it's as much as we're excited about Anthony Edwards right now, like Anthony Edwards has to make, take that next step. He's yeah. not always intentional. I'm watching right. the second quarter and I'm like, and what are you like? What are you doing? Well, I said this last week. I got pushback. I said he's going to either become MJ Light or Neek. Neek was a human highlight film. That's a great, that's a great comparison. Or, but yeah, he didn't take the next step yep. and become a more um, a willing distributor. A Cere better... You got to be a cerebral pl player. Yeah. If you're the best player, and your decisions matter. He's at the crossroads because yep. he could be either. Yep. Now, in this series, Ant deserves credit because I thought he was really verbal, confrontational, was willing to talk to – I mean, you yes. watched him, but he is loose. Now, he's 22, so I yeah. kind of like – Yeah. But I do think he's at a crossroads, and this series went a long way in me thinking, okay, he can be closer to the MJ than the Neek. And by the way, Neek's a Hall of Famer and all-timer. Yeah. But there was a difference. Yeah. And Michael was 100%. completely intentional – in every quarter of every big game. What's so interesting with this is if you listen to his teammates, look, this is what I love about Ant. First of all, infectious personality. Yeah, yeah. Wants to be better and knows that he's not. Yeah. Like, everybody wants to make him into this thing. He's going, like, slow, slow down, slow down. I know what I don't know, right? Yeah. And you hear his teammates talking about, you know, we're really, he's watching film and he's trying to get better. And yeah. it's like, 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 they're trying to encourage him to keep this going because they know he, one, he has the potential to be yeah. amazing, but two, that he's not there. And this is what st I struggle with, with us as the media. Yeah. When we start anointing these guys, yeah. look, he's not fully formed. That's right. Don't, don't crown him when he still has a ways to go because he's going to think he's already arrived and he's not there yet. But he is at an interesting inflection point. Where he, is he going to commit and be almost strategic yes. with his career like MJ or just wildly entertaining? Yeah. And this is also why it's so vital when you have young guys before you have to pay them to get to the playoffs, to get some of that truth serum. Before I pay this guy like a franchise cornerstone, can I see him in the playoffs? Because that's when I'm really going to find out if he's a cornerstone or he's just great entertainment value for the regular season. Yeah. Rick Buecher. Good stuff, my man. Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.